Lottery Bros Podcast. We on episode 105. Turn up. Happy Friday. Shout out to the folks that's listening to the audio podcast. Uh, we started with the clip from Fences. Troy Maxson, believe it or not, that was the first role I ever played. For real, when I was in 12th grade, I played Troy Maxson. I spit them same words. And Denzel, let me holler at you because I might have did it a little bit better. You <laughs> feel me? None like, of y'all nah. got nothing on James Earl Jones. Nah, nobody has anything on James Earl Jones. <laughs> I shut up when that, when you see that clip. Yeah, but um, Father's Day weekend. Big shout out to all of the uh, the fathers out there. Uh, that's why we wanted to start with that. Just a, a real good example of some strong, stern, present fatherhood shit. Mm-hmm. And look, not perfect. You know what I mean? Yeah. You could point to flaws in it, but oh, he's yeah, there. Watch, yeah, watch yeah. the rest of the movie. Yeah. But... Man to man. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga was talking to the rainstorm. But it was a lot of new fathers out there, like people close to me and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, I know that just had babies. So um, happy Father's Day to all of the fathers out there. And I wanted to start with um, a question to you. Uh, what was the most important thing you would say you learned from dad? I want to give a special shout out to the fathers as well. And the, the I think the most important thing that I might have learned from my dad, if I had to just give that quick answer, was just, um, damn, even looking at my life now, I mean, I wouldn't say this is the most important thing, but what a, I think a very important thing I learned from my dad is the way he has stuck it through with my mom, you know? Mm-hmm. I think his example is is super important for me. As far as, you know what I'm saying, what I want for my future. I want to have a wife. I want to have kids. And I think he has showed me that it ain't going to be easy. That yep. he's not going to be, you know what I'm saying, there for everything. Like, I always hold it. I don't hold it over my dad's head. But, like, my dad wasn't there for our playoff games. You know what I'm saying? When I was in school. And I, I, I don't know why me, yet, when I was young, I made it a big deal. There's some people who don't even have their dad in their life. Mm-hmm. But I made that such a big deal. But looking back. I understand that as a father, you have to do what you got to do to put food on the table. For sure. Keep your woman happy. Your woman not always going to be the happiest. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I think his example and showing me what, you know what I'm saying, that early love, you know what I'm saying, seeing him love my mom for my whole life, I think that's one of my one of my biggest takeaways. Okay. Dope. I'm going to try to say not th- something not the same as you, but kind of similar. Um, biggest thing I learned from dad was uh, sacrifice. Sacrifice and patience are the two things. Um, and thinking first was probably those the three things that I learned from my from my dad that I would say to this day, I 100 percent use every single day. Number one, sacrifice is like making, like Terrence said, making the decisions to make your kids happy. My parents used to go crazy on Christmas. Mahoney. And put themselves in crazy debt. <laughs> Nah, yeah, they was They were signing up for credit cards, all types of shit, just for that morning. Yeah. And me, what, 25, 20, 20 years later, I still remember coming down them steps. You know what I'm saying? And they didn't really always have it to do all of that, but they always went above and beyond because they used to love doing that shit. So sacrifice and then thinking first. I think fathers provide structure anyway when it comes to, like, young, especially a young boy. Yeah. So... One of the biggest things I took from dad was to not be emotional in the moment and think about what you did. You know, you know how you do some wrong shit and he'd be like, why did you do that? What, what, what did you, did you think that this was, those conversations mold you into a different person because yeah, when shit start coming up, now you really going, it, it's way more serious, but now you're going to think before you just do. Yeah. And so that's, that would be something that I, uh. 100% cherished that relationship and definitely um, got that from it. And then to start with the J. Cole, you know what I'm saying? Rest in peace, Uncle Phil. You know, you're the only father that I ever knew for the people who don't have their father in their life but was able to use somebody else's that father figure, sure. whether, whether it be a coach, whether it be something you was watching on TV, it could be a teacher in your life. Shout out to all of those people who stepped up, you know what I'm saying, and took care of somebody else's kids. I be thinking yeah, about that too. You never yeah. know who you're going to meet or what you might have to... Step up and do. Yep. I always think early, I mean, later in my life, I would be really, like, involved in just kids. I always tell Terrell, I, I can see myself working at a school some at some point in my life, just teaching maybe content creation or yep. something like that, just to get kids into that, 
door. That's low key something that I want to do in my life is to re- eventually turn around and reach back to the youth. So, yeah, one hundred percent. I was gonna say uh, if you don't have your father in your life, um, take this day or take that that Father's Day weekend as a reminder to your obligation to the next generation. You know, to do everything you gotta do to be the great dad that you deserve. One hundred. And so. Shout out to all the father figures, some dope ass stepfathers out there. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Some dope ass mom, so dope ass people that stepped up for sure. It's also Juneteenth weekend, and if you don't know uh, what Juneteenth is, because a lot of people are still uh, figuring it out, but it basically marks the day when the troops arrived in Texas, 1865, and took control of the state to ensure that all enslaved people were free. And um, the Emancipation Proclamation was literally in 1963, and the last slaves weren't freed until 1865. Yeah. And so we went a whole nother two years after Lincoln quote unquote freed the slaves, which is why it's like, okay, cool. But you know what I'm saying? It it worked, but it didn't work all the way. Yeah. And so this is the celebration. But I did have a question for you in regards to Juneteenth. Yeah. There's a lot of people that like to celebrate it, but then there's also people that feel like we shouldn't celebrate. You know, I'm in that camp that feels like I don't, I don't really care about Juneteenth. That's why I, that's why I was going to ask you to kind of elaborate because, you know, people don't be understanding. I don't give a fuck about Juneteenth because it's just a reminder, another reminder of, you know what I'm saying, of like where, like of how, it, uh, damn, I should have prepared for that. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't like it because I just feel like it's a reminder of just where, like how close our trauma is, you know what I'm saying? We're yeah. not so far away from that, you know? What year? 1865. 1865 is a long ass time away. So we are a break away from that. But I also feel like we don't need a reminder of when we were freed as slaves, you know? No, yeah. Do the I people in the Holocaust, who, do the, the Jewish people who survived the Holocaust, do they have a day where they reminded when y'all finally left the camps? This is the day when we finally left the camps. You know what I'm saying? I don't think they would want to be reminded of that. It's like, why do we have so many reminders? Black History Month is full of, you know what I'm saying? They're not talking about black, real black history. We're not, talk, we're not going to talk about the real black history. We're just going to talk about American black history. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know what I'm saying? The beginning of slavery, yeah. And I just felt like, sure. I don't know, y'all. I look While at it, it's a great thing, mm-hmm. I also feel like it's another reminder of like, this is when y'all niggas was free for real. You know, this one, y'all niggas finally got free. Mm-hmm. And um, I look at it two ways. I look at it that way. There's a, I'm kind of split. I think it's cool because it's a reminder to, it's a reminder that of all of the work that we still have to do. And it's a reminder that shit ain't the same for everybody. So, you know, it's still a, a push for reparations. It's still a push for, you know, a lot. Yeah. At the same time, I do kind of feel like, damn, it is another reminder that, you, you have shit. You have to stop turning the air off, bro. It's too hot. Oh, you can turn it back on. Just reach over there and turn it back on. It was cold as fuck in this joint. I'm Freezing. Like, why am I hot right now? Anyway, just to stay on Juneteenth. Mm-hmm. It's like, do black people really need a reminder of when we were free as slaves? Do we really need that? When you really think about it. Is it a reminder or is it a celebration? Is it a celebration? Well, that's, that, well, that's what people were saying. Because my thing is, this is what I'm saying, too. People are upset that Walmart or somebody put out the Juneteenth things, and they're like, why the fuck is, well, look at Walmart capitalizing. And it's like, hold up. So are we happy about this, or do we not fuck with it? Well, I don't like them putting out a red velvet cheesecake ice cream in celebration of the free, free and the slaves. Or people putting watermelon shit on sale. Because that's not true. That's ridiculous. Bad, bad, uh, I mean, Bath and Body Works put watermelon candles up there last uh, Juneteenth. Remember that? No. That's ridiculous. ridiculous. Damn, how you know it was Juneteenth, though? It did was. Did they say Juneteenth. that? Or did no, they I just have a, was it watermelon season? And it's just unfortunately, it's you like, know? Oh, no, they did it. My bad. They did that for Black History Month. It was Black History Month. So guess what all the shit. You know how you make a table? Yeah. When it's a sale? They put all their watermelon shit up there for sale. I don't like shit like that. I've and been I seeing a lot like, of that. When we try to say that we don't have like things done for us or we don't have stuff, they be like, look at y'all got Juneteenth. We, y- y'all just got Juneteenth. And it's like, yo, fuck Juneteenth. That doesn't really do anything, but it's not nothing but a reminder. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Juneteenth is, I guess it's, it is a, a definitely a staple, but a holiday, 
Motherfuckers getting off work for Juneteenth, you know? So we can go out and do what? Celebrate our freedom. Nah, but I mean, well, it is a celebra- it is a celebration because of the people that were freed. Yeah. I'm not you know shitting on you know what I'm saying. The actual day. The actual. But the, the recurring holiday is. I mean, I do kind of look at it like, well, it's cool. I think as I long like, as we're reminded of our past, we'll always have a part of us that's kind of stuck there. You know? Yeah. And I know that's how you feel, because like when they say, Oh, you the first, you don't wanna you don't wanna ever be called the first. Nah, I won. He was the first black actor to win. Nah, I won. First black director to win. Nah, I won. I don't give a damn that I was the first. Because I'm going to be back, I'm gonna be back here and win again. Y'all better not never let me win nothing. They're <laughs> not going to fuck with my speech. I won tonight, y'all, because I was actually the best. The best. I guess this means I'm better than everybody that was nominated. Tonight I am. And it don't got nothing to do with this. I don't want that Moonlight Award. You know what I'm saying? I don't mm-hmm. want that Mahershala Ali Moonlight win. I don't want it. I want to win because I'm the best. I don't want my black to have nothing to do with it. Like, I was going to ask you, like, they have a, uh, it's not the Rooney rule, but they were asking Adam Silver because I think with the hiring of that Lakers coach, that makes half of the league in the NBA has all black, has black coaches. So there's 15 black coaches and I think 15 white. Or something like that, where or something else. we okay. kind of split down the middle. They were like, what are some other things you're doing for, as far as inclusion and, and diversity? And I'm like, yo, I don't think things should happen because of that. Mm-hmm. I and don't did think you hear that- what Silva said? He said just that. Yeah. His response was, I don't think, he said, I hate that we even have to have a conversation about it because it should just be natural. And so there is no... What we're going to do to include more blacks. Right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Basically shitted on the NFL. Yeah, the NFL, yeah. And the NFL just instated a Rooney rule for QB coaches. Where now, or something like, I think it's either QB or specialty. And I'm not too sure. It's one of the junior level coaching positions. Where now you got to interview three minority candidates before you can make a hire. See, I don't like, I don't like that. I hate it. It's stupid. I wouldn't want to get a job knowing that the fact that I'm black is one of the reasons why. I wanted to be my talent. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to be because I was qualified. I don't want it to be because you had to interview me or y'all had to add a black person on y'all staff. I feel like it's more of a waste of time for a lot of people anyway, because it's like, if you know who you're going to hire, cool, go with them. Don't have me waste my time preparing a presentation and shit thinking I'm, I got a shot when you just doing, all right, let's just like the, like my Broncos did with Flores, Elway, drunk ass. Came up there and was like, let's just fuck it. Let's just interview this, yeah. this dude so we can get on with it. And yeah. hire Fangio. Now, I understand the powers Fucking that joke. be, if the, if the machine is run by, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. none of us, then I can understand how we might not ever get that opportunity if you take away something like a Rooney rule. So there's a plus and minus to it. But, damn, I would just be feeling like a little shitty, you know? It just goes to show, like, when you look at leagues, like, because you see people will say, well, how would that ever happen if people love to do that? Well, if they take it away, then what if they don't get any... All right, well, then we have other institutions that are just like this league that are getting it done. It's the same thing with, like, gun control in the United States and other countries. Like, the NBA is doing it. They, do they have a Rooney rule? You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I don't know if they have a Rooney rule. They're but just getting it done. They're actually focusing on it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and I think the NBA has more. Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to, yeah. I don't want to stay on that for too long. I'm with you. This is what I was going to say. I'm on my Instagram, right? Have you seen these chicks on Instagram? Oh, God. That do the pottery? Let me just say this. Let me say it, Terrell. Pottery like building the pot? Yes. They had a joint in the front of them and the joint spinning and they're like molding some shit. Okay, yeah. Ah, I know exactly what's going on. And let me tell you, there's a lot of content that's like freaky in a way. And ain't nobody going to say anything about it. I, was, I went past this lady's page. She got all these pottery videos. She got like 60K followers. And I'm like, motherfuckers don't give a fuck about pots like this. There ain't that many motherfuckers. When look, people going to say, yes, there is. I don't <laughs> think y'all are all following this fine ass girl. All these niggas. You know why? Because she going up and down the joint. And the joint spinning. I'm just letting y'all know I see the You got play. a dirty ass mind. I have that a dirty mind? 60,000 yeah. motherfuckers follower for what? 
They the, like pot. Y'all niggas want to make pots? No. You didn't even grow up doing this shit? Most of our schools didn't even have a pottery class. And I, I, said, I just wanted to say this one thing. It's crazy how you could low-key do some shit. It's almost like the girls that I can't even think about. I can't even think about it. Or how about the dude that's chopping trees, right? Have y'all seen that dude? He's chopping tree trunks, but he's talking to the tree trunks. And he's like, yeah, open up for me. Yeah. Oh, this, oh, this one's <laughs> thick. Oh, you're thick. And girls are eating it up. They don't give a fuck about chopping trees. And look, if you go to him and say, I know what you're doing, nigga. You know what he's going to say? I'm living my life. I'm doing what I want. But you know exactly what you're doing. Yeah, Wiz Khalifa is the biggest example. Feel me? Uh -huh. Wiz started getting in the gym. This nigga's wearing underwear in the gym with a cup on or some shit. You're not even going up against anybody. This nigga's got a cup on or his fucking schlong is out. He's putting his dick out everywhere. <laughs> and all the, all the fellas are like, yo, bro, what are you doing? Like, This ain't Jim Cole. And look, what, how does he respond? He said he was being bullied. And where's my man? Cushion OJ. We go way back. But come on, bro. I lied. Yeah. Y'all like unfollowed Wiz when he was doing that shit. Like, you wildin'. Come on, bro. Like, so I was going to say that there's people who know that their content. Yeah. You're the man that do the meats. He be fingering the meat. See, yeah. Or they spread the meat open. Y'all know, know what y'all doing. doing. Content can be freaky, and you know that you're going to invoke some of these nasty-minded motherfuckers that's going to say, you know what, I'm going to follow her because she going up and down that, uh, she going up and down that pot like she can go up and down something else. You feel me? Uh-huh. Or no, massage no, 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 no. in the, the joint, and it's dope. How you feel about the niggas that do the massages that are clearly just... You know how I feel about that. Did you see the video of that dude who was like in between the girl leg like that, she was butt-ass naked? No, yeah, that's what I'm Absolutely talking about. Absolutely not. <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs> Hell no, nah, I'm not with that shit. What in the Brazzers? <laughs> <laughs> right, what is this getting ready to turn into? What the Bang Bros is going on? <laughs> What's this about to fucking turn into? I went to this dope ass movie theater over the weekend called Warehouse Cinemas. It was dope as shit. It's like a warehouse that they turn into a uh, a movie theater. So they keep all of the like construction crates and wood, everything there. It was dope as shit. Out Frederick, shout out to them. Motherfuckers haven't paid me. I just thought it was fucking dope because they had their seats was heated. The motherfucking food was good. I had some loaded nachos. Man, you know I love nachos. But went to see Jurassic World, and that joint was some shit. I don't know if I can make it through a movie with nachos. <laughs> I'm, I'm 45 minutes in, waiting for the joint to end. <laughs> a third act? Oh, what's the run time? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is 100% the worst. I always get a large drink yeah. and end up having to pee by the end of the movie. Damn, so I'm yeah. like, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let me tell you, like, the last couple of times I went to the movies with this girl, it's like, you got to get your own popcorn. Keep going, I'm going to turn the air on. And your own drink when you go to the movies. Because low-key, like, y'all, you ever go to the movies with a girl, Terrell? Uh, you go to the movies with your girl all the time. You go to the movies with a girl and it seemed like, I want my drink right here and I want to drink my drink. I don't want to do this. I don't like pointing at a drink. I don't like sharing my popcorn anymore. Nah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Because these motherfuckers be hungry as shit. These girls be greedy as shit. Nah, I don't think real. I want no popcorn. All right, bet. Well, look, I'm going to do a large popcorn. She going to be good. What you got to snack on mine. <laughs> Next thing you know, she <laughs> eating the pop. I said, damn, I should have got two bags. So now when I go, two bags of popcorn. Oh, no, but I didn't want any popcorn. We going to do two bags. <laughs> Even if she crumbing her joint. God, what you let me do. tell you. I'm trying to get in my bag when I'm in, when I'm in the movie. I'm, I'm past the cute phase. I'm, I'm in that joint crushing. You not enjoying this? <laughs> what you got to do is get a large popcorn and sneak one of them wood boxes, the foldable boxes. I don't want to do that. Toss ass a box and pour look, some. I want all of mine. I don't want to pour you some. You eat all your popcorn? 100%. Because this is this the best thing about the movies. You crush the joint while you're watching the... Uh, Previews. Previews. And then when the movie start up, then the movie get good and you kind of do one of these numbers. When you watching, you might put your bag to the side, but then you grab your bag. Look, I fuck around, put my bag to the side. She over there. I don't know if y'all be with chicks that eat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Any of y'all fuck with a girl that go to the gym who eats for real? Bro. Oh, yeah, no bullshit. This not your second meal. We're going to do another bag. And look, who's going to go that? Look, they say, oh, yeah, well, if you a stud member, you get free popcorn refills. Who the fuck want to get up in the middle of the movie and go refill the popcorn? I know. That's the fattest shit ever. Number one, I don't know anybody that finishes their whole popcorn. I don't know I'm anybody. I'm here for my second bag. 
<laughs> oh, but you know what they say? If your popcorn get cold, you can go get a refill to be hot. And that does happen. I know if I worked in the movie theaters and you came up and asked for a refill, for some reason I would be sick. I would be irritated. Like I'm doing the most. Look, you know how they do it? Press this shit. I always get, I always go crazy with movie theater snacks. I'm not even going. I got, I got the loaded nachos, a drink, fruit snacks, and a small popcorn. Guess how much popcorn I ate? Like probably like 15, 16 kernels. This nigga spent forty eight dollars, fifty seven dollars on uh. <laughs> and look, you know what's crazy too? The movie theater we went to, our movie was at like one fifty. Yeah. We got in that jump like one fifty three. We was like, bet we still got time to get popcorn, whatever, because the previews is going to be running. Oh, okay, yeah. When we got in the movie theater, these motherfuckers already running from dinosaurs. We was like, hold no. up, hold up. Right. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I guess they don't do previews in that joint. Damn, that sucks. Previews is a part of the movie. Nah, that joint was trash. No, the movie was terrible. Don't go see Jurassic World. Y'all wait for it to come out on DVD or see if you can just wait. Dad wait. wants to see that. But father's that. You well, all right. It's other things to see. It ain't nothing else to see. It's nothing else. I mean, I mean it's good. The... It's got dinosaurs in it, but it don't even have the dinosaurs you love for real. All oh, right, you're ruining it now. I bet they got these feathery motherfuckers. Where did they come? Like, from? As long as they got the stegosaurus, then I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> you got a favorite? <laughs> no stegosaurus? Nah, and they just like they do the same shit. It's like, all right, I'm tired of seeing. I'm not gonna ruin it for you. Please don't. Let me tell y'all something about Terrell. This motherfucker will ruin a movie. This is ruining a movie to me. You know what? It was good. That ending was crazy. You're spoiling it. <laughs> That's a spoiler. Because now when I'm watching, I'm like, all right, the ending got to be crazy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or I just wish they would have. Whoa. Yeah, no bullshit. Terrence be spoiling shit. Oh, shout out to everybody that was beating me up about not watching Stranger Things. Me and my girl on episode two, season two. Mm -hmm. Just got my man Will from the uh, upside down. Upside down, and uh, yeah, it's actually like, look, it's actually pretty cool right now. I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying. I'm, I'm I'm enjoying it. Wasn't fucking with Steve. He was giving a little bit of a weird vibe in the beginning, but he's starting to be kind of cool. Finally, this nigga listened up. Look, I got something to ask you. Mm -hmm. When you get married, and your girl coming down the aisle, your wifey mm -hmm. coming down the aisle. You think you want to cry? 1,000% crying. It seemed like forever that I had waited for you. I'm 100% crying. Because if we go ahead to Johnny Gill playing <laughs> in the world, 100% crying. Now I was and you know what? I'm going to tell you why. That's what I was going to ask you. What oh. do you think that you would be crying for? Because if you love somebody for real, yeah. And shout out to my boy Alan, just got married to his beautiful wife, beautiful weekend, beautiful honeymoon. Seen it all on, on the IG story, bro. But um, when you love somebody for real yeah. and it's happening and like this your person, to me, I'm emotional as fuck. Number one, I'll cry at somebody else's wedding. Damn, yeah. I'll cry looking at a wedding on TV. Because it's like, damn, that's your one. Yeah. This is my, per this is my one. So, seeing your wife's or your fiance's father or the, the strong male in her life. If, it, if that person is there. Because somebody's going to bring it down the aisle. Because shout out my man Donald, when we was at that wedding, we was in the rehearsal and I was like, Terry. Yeah, you kept it together though. I thought you was going to break down. Man. Just because I love my bro and my sis. Being the best man low-key is tough. Go ahead, yeah. I ain't going to step on nah, what you're saying. Sure. But all I was saying is if that's your one, and when they come in on the aisle and you see that in the, the they got the, I don't know, bro. That's just, I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry when, I'm going to cry, I'm crying when you get married. I'm going to cry when, see, I'm, I, I'm just going, I'm going to be in tears. I I'm just I would cry when you got married, but I don't think I would cry if my wife was coming Terrence, down Terrence, you 100% aisle. crying. Because when you think about your dating history and all the bullshit you done been through, and you finally got somebody that you... About to do life with, bro, trust me, it's going to be overwhelming. I don't know. My thing is this. I've seen a lot of videos of niggas crying, and I'm like, yo, I'm not about to be up there like that. You ever, did y'all see the nigga? How about, how about this? Y'all see the first touch videos? Somebody's wife coming in. <laughs> what are you crying for? Terrence, you what not, are you crying for? This nigga don't know real love. Nah, fuck Terrence, that. think about this. You I'm have a, not about to you be. You have a baby girl. 
You have a baby girl, or I have a baby girl. Yeah. And let's say my baby girl is your niece. Yeah, but she's your flower girl. The the weight of of your family and life in front of you right now yeah. with music. You're you're in tears. I'm in tears behind you. So you better be crying, crying because I love this song. You can't have the best man crying and you not. Because I'm gonna be in nah, tears. Put it like this. this. I'm gonna drop them thug ones. A very good example, best man Morris Chestnut. Terrence, hell no. Did you not see what Morris Chestnut did? Nah, hold on, wait. He was crying like shit. That, I'm talking about coming down the aisle. That nigga was crying for some other shit. <laughs> and that's what I was going to talk about. Some of y'all niggas are crying because of other shit. Terrence, no way. No, Terrence. Best man was a great ass example of that because look, this man was not crying. He was crying because he loved his wife, but low key, he was crying because he found some shit out. And I'm not saying niggas cry because they find shit out, but low key. I don't think Lance was crying because he found some shit out. I think he was crying because he dead ass loved this chick. Nah, they was doing the flashbacks. <laughs> that man, I'm about to say, how you gonna, this nigga was thinking about his best man right behind him. What's another example movie where somebody came down the aisle and they was crying? Can you think of one? Uh, I don't know, but I like the, I like the tears. I like the dudes that do this. And the tear drop. Because you got to remain on your grizzly. You know what I'm saying? You, nigga. you can't be up there. <laughs> Some people. And then I gotta, I'm not doing all of that. Your wife would love that, though, if you do that. Nah. Some, people, some of these girls say, look, if he ain't crying, I'm going back. Let me back. show you something. Let me change your ball game real quick. Your son is there. I'm not about to be balling, the, balling, crying in front of my kids. The best thing you can do for your son to show him your love for his mother is to cry. Drop some thug joints. But y'all niggas up there. Because I love your mother this much. Man, this nigga don't know no real love. Hey, look, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Did you see the video where the dude was proposing and all his men was around him, but they was all crying? His yeah. His was like this. <laughs> Honestly, when you seen two people go through hell and back and you had to be a part of that, yo, bro, like when y'all done had that up and down, that's my thing. If it's been easy breezy, I don't see what you crying about. If it's been war and we finally figured it out, if them words that he's saying in this song about the ups and downs ring true about what we got, I can feel that emotion pouring out of me. Yet, it got to be that, bro. It got to be that. Y'all, I'll tell y'all this. If y'all ever see my wedding day video, if I ever get married, because I will get married. I don't give a damn if I'm up there, John, motherfucker. Uh, marry yourself. <laughs> you know? <laughs> if y'all ever see that video and I'm crying, just know that, that and I'm crying like that. Me and this one been through some yeah. things. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> that's crazy. Because for you, if, if you propose to your chick right now, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think I would be balling more so than I would just be happy. Like, yeah. The wedding, yeah. It's like, oh, shit. Nigga, Terrell getting married. Uh-huh. Leaving your black ass. You're not leaving me. You're not with me now. Black ass motherfucker. Go. Y'all heard he was in Frederick. Where was I at? Right. I don't depend on this nigga. I mean, I ain't coming home to your black ass no People more. People was like, Terrence don't know what to do without Terrell because of that vlog. But low key, trust me, y'all. When Terrell was working at Best Buy, he didn't have a girl. When Terrell was busting his ass at his job and I had stepped from mine, trust me, I got very used to being by myself. This nigga Terrell used to come home and be like, I got so much fucking work to do. <laughs> I'm just going to go in my room. And I've been in the crib by myself all day. Terrence will wrap you up when you come home from work. He's like a pup. I'm not a pup. Hey, hey, did you see this on TV? Oh, and let me tell you this. Oh, and did you see what Ron Rivera said? Oh, and did you see what... And Terrence be looking at random shit on YouTube. Y'all have no idea. Terrence will look at a nigga that was locked up for 30 years as out telling stories about how he killed niggas. Nah, and it's a nigga up there saying, yeah, we stabbed a nigga, robbed a nigga, shot a nigga. And you're like, what are you watching? <laughs> nah, have y'all Why are you seen, looking at this? Have y'all ever seen... I think it's called the... And I'm about to figure it out what it is. It's called the... What is it called, Terrell? Them joints she was watching with the dude... Oh, uh, that was it. Um, and I had it right there. YouTube would stop being a bitch. He's always watching some random shit. It's always something random. It's always like, yo, why are you looking at this? This is so. It'll annoying. be like a testimony of a dude that used to run a prison, and now he's given details. That dude, it's called the Oh my fucking god, YouTube. Let Parents, me fucking if you see don't know it. what it's called, it's it's fine. right there, but it's not stopping. The Soft White Underbelly. That's the name of the, uh, the YouTube channel, y'all. If you ever just want to watch some rant, they do documentary-style in documentary interviews with people that are like, 
they're random. Like I watched this dude from this this dude, he was a gang member for like some years. He went to prison for like nine years. He was just talking about his life. Man, it give you a different perspective. They had one with a a, a, a a prison warden, and he talked about giving people the electric chair, and they were asking him stuff like, did you ever feel like you had their life in your hands, or it was your responsibility? And he was like, I mean, his, I mean, when you hear these people's perspectives, you understand that everybody not living the same life as you. Some people have crazy stories. The gang member, he talked about being shot in the head and thrown in the back of a trunk, and everybody thought he was dead, and his girlfriend found him in the back of a trunk. She thought he was dead, but the nigga lived because he was like, you know how your brain splits down the middle? Uh-huh. When you shoot a gun, sometimes the bullet will split. Sometimes. And he said the bullet split and went right through the... He got shot in his head, but it went right through where his brain was, like, dipped. So he did not lose his memory or anything. He survived that shit. I'm like, okay, bet. I've never That's heard this wild as story fuck. before. You see how you try to shit on a nigga? But well, what is he watching? Terrell watching boring ass bullshit. I'm a TV show watcher. I watch hella TV shows. Number one, I haven't started P Valley yet, which is ridiculous. The new season of All American that was on CW is on Netflix. I haven't started that. I haven't seen the new season of Barry yet. Like, I'm just. But I'm watching Stranger Things. I have other things to watch. Back again. And uh, Mayans season finale getting right, uh, came on. Damn, I missed it. Gotta watch that joint. So. Ah, I missed it. Better Call Saul coming back July 5th. Let's get it. They you always throwing random show shit. Don't we have a segment for shows? Nobody give a fuck that you watching the Stranger Things, boy. Oh, but we care about you looking at a nigga get shot in the head. You brought that up. All right, I got something. To, I gotta uh, ask you something. It's a, it's a school related type joint for my boy Kyle. I think that's a dope hat because it says P. And I hated that it said P because I wish it said like something else because <laughs> I didn't. I wasn't really fucking with the pushing. Pushing P, P huh? That's what people keep saying. <laughs> when I wore this hat at, at that brunch of pushing P, I was like, P. no. <laughs> Pointers in the paddock in my pee. I'm pushing pee. Man, Gunna, did you see that the letter that he put out? Yeah. Talking about, you know, it was Justice B Day. That was a, that was a, yeah. I like how he started that joint by saying this was the biggest year of my life because it, it truly was. And y'all got to sign that petition. The Young Thug put it out? Y'all got to go sign that petition. Oh, okay, yeah. It's like a something about art and voices. I just signed it because I fuck with bro. Yeah, it should it'd be illegal to use artist uh, music. In court because it's art, even though it's been done for years. It's I also think more so y'all shouldn't put that shit in your music, but for sure. But isn't it funny how we got a Rico case on all these rappers, right? All these rappers are getting locked up, but no Rico. Where's the Rico case for the Proud Boys or some of these groups that stormed the Capitol? You know what I'm saying? We just got the one group of 31 dudes that was thinking about doing some shit, but where's all these Rico cases? I know they got shit out there. These motherfuckers got a whole chat room. They want them to follow through on them plans. Yeah, no bullshit. <laughs> but look, my boy Kai 302, uh, shout out, bro. Um, he was like, I'm not going to read the whole thing. But basically, you know, he graduated high school 2020. Yeah. Went to community college. Then um, he was like, you tried being in college full time. You're struggling to finish, but you got all C's. So the following year, you get a job and the pay is trash and the people you work with are assholes. Uh, but you got some decent experience and then you quit. And then look, back to school full time, you stumble across a great job with great pay and you get the job. But now he's thinking about, do you finish your degree while working a full time job or do you just drop out and stick with your full time job and keep working your way up? But if you do that, you're going to miss out on the college experience. So it's really a question of I got a dope job right now that I could move up in, but I feel like I'm going to be missing out on a college experience. Yeah. Of girls, dorms, parties, campus shit. And so what advice would you give somebody that's muddling the line between, damn, I got a dope job, but I haven't finished college. I can move up here, but I might miss out on the, uh, the college experience. I would say the thing about your career, because your college experience is going to be, it's like temporary, you know? It's like being upset that you didn't go to prom, you know? Damn, I want to go to prom, but I got this obligation. When you miss prom... You didn't get to dress up. You ain't get to do all of that. But low key, you really didn't miss anything. You can still go and have fun with, you know what I'm saying? You can still go and low key get that fun side of your life out of the way. Mm -hmm. But you're going to be more proud of the fact that you got further in your career than you did having like a college experience. You know what I'm saying? That's a fact. For a lot of the niggas that are in like fraternities and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? That's a dope ass experience. You know what I'm saying? But you got to ask yourself, 
was I really focused on my career or that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Is that fraternity going to put you in a position to get, you know what I'm saying, the career you want, not just any career, but the career you want. And I think that's what you should be focused on. Like if you in, if you got a dope job and your job is paying you well and that's going to lead you towards your career, mm -hmm. I think it's important to do that job. Don't go to school and try to have fun because you feel like this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm. I think getting out of school, I wish... I did not go straight to film school. I wish if I could redo my life, I would have left school, got a job, and waited until maybe I was a little bit older and then maybe went to film school. Yeah. I would need to have some type of knowledge of what I had now because, you know what I'm saying, I don't have no regrets of what, I, what we did because we are who we are. Mm -hmm. And I could be a completely different dude or might not even be here had I not went yeah. down there. Don't know the decisions that you would make, but... I think it's more important for people to think more about your career first than a college experience because low key, if you're not going to college free, that's the variable people don't think about. Are you going to, yeah, were you paying for a good time for some education that's going to fade? Feel me? Nah, for sure. And he's in, a, he's in, he's got a, like a, he's in a school for electromechanical, but he's already doing like electrician type work. Man, yeah. I say, and if that's what you do, if that's what you want your career to be, I say you go full fledged at your career. You want to be the youngest. That's a ball. You want to be the youngest baller in your career. Fuck nah, for school. sure. You're gonna be in school doing algebra and English, and they're gonna be telling you to write a story about Shakespeare and shit. And you're gonna be like, discussion Yo, posts. This shit don't have nothing to do with what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And then what I'll say is, me and Terrence went to uh, accelerated school, so we didn't have summer breaks. We didn't have winter breaks. We didn't, and then look, we went to Full Sail. If anybody's familiar with Full Sail University and that campus, it's not like a college campus. It's almost like a dope-ass community college that you come to, do what you got to do, and there's places you can chill, but you get the fuck up out of that joint when you get out. Um, and so on top of that, we got out of school early. Think about it. The niggas that go to school four years, they go to school, right? Yeah. The nigga that get out of school and start working, now he got four years of work experience going into age so from 18 19 20 21 he got four years of work experience and you just getting started when me and terrence got out I, all of our friends still had two three years of school left right so we had started working early and so by the time i got like even me like if you use me as an example by the time i got my first big promotion where i started making like i went from making like Fourteen dollars an hour to making like twenty four. That was my first big promotion when I went out of Springfield. Shit was crazy. A lot of my niggas was still in school, and was just getting raised. Walk. By the time they walked, I was making seventy five grand. Yeah. Because I had, I was, I was climbing that motherfucking ladder like I was trying to get out the motherfucking fire. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so, you just got to kind of weigh it that way. I was about to say, yeah, that's definitely to me, and and. I know a lot of people that start school at 21. They went to start at college 21, 22. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure some people that might listen to this podcast that started school a little late. And let me tell you, you're actually doing a great thing because you have a little bit of a sense of structure now. At 21, mm -hmm. you got a little bit more discipline. When I was 18, we went, from, we went to school from 18 to 20. We were still thinking about a whole bunch of shit. I'm still trying to get my first this, do my first that, get drunk for the first time, get high for the first time, do this for the first time, all yeah. while trying to pursue information that's supposed to stick with me for my whole career. Yeah, that's true. You know, that's one thing I would tell a future son or, or, or daughter of mine is like, yo, what you want to do is what's most important. It's not the fun you want to have. It's the life you want to have after the fun. Yeah. This dude named Mike, shout out Mike, uh, he hit me up. On IG and was like, yo, I'm thinking about going to school now. I just turned 28. I think I said this on the podcast before. Yeah. But going older, you do retain way more info. You discipline because you're not on no game. Right. And then you in there with some youngins a little bit and you're like, fuck these motherfuckers. They not paying attention. Terrell can tell you, when I was in school, I'm looking around. I'm like, who is she? Who is she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. And you know what? Depending on what you're going to school for, I would think that a lot of people that listen to this podcast are on the creative side, but there's a lot of people that's going to things like medicine or whatever. If you're trying to be a doctor or whatever, you're trying to do something like that where you need credential and you need to go to school, 100% do that because there's upside on the outside of school. Yeah. But if it's something that you could pick up from, like when people hit me up about film school, I always say, how much YouTube work have you done? Or how much 
have you tried to do it your own? Because a lot of shit you can teach yourself or you can find it somewhere without having to pay an arm and a leg and have to pay somebody back. Yeah. Because I will say, even though I was making some good money, I had supervisors that had the same type take home pay as me because even though I make 20 grand more than you, I got a hefty ass student loan to pay back. So after taxes, we both get our check. My free to play money is your free to play, free to pay play money. Right. Then it was niggas that was making what I was making, but they had way more free money because they didn't go to school and they got out, worked and moved up. Mm -hmm. So it's a bunch of ways to look at it. Just think about all those options. Yeah. But dope gems for you. That's why I wanted to ask you on this drink. Cause right, I said, right. all right, bet. We could, we could definitely inform you. Now I did want to pivot to something I was saying on my Twitter. Um, that this podcast would be one where I kind of open up to y'all and tell y'all some stuff that I normally wouldn't, but I think it, that my journey, I think sharing your journey can help somebody else, especially when, you know what I'm saying, some people don't understand like yep. certain things. But uh, this coming Saturday will make it three weeks that I have been sober and not smoking weed. And I want to keep it a hundred. A lot of people wanted to know if Plaza, I was Plaza, smoking Plaza. weed. Yeah, man. Yeah. Three weeks. And a lot of people wondered, like, does Terrence smoke? I saw people on my Twitter, like, Terrence don't smoke. Terrence, the twins don't smoke. The twins don't smoke. I'm going to give y'all some fun facts. I have smoked for at least easy four years straight. Every podcast that me and Terrence have ever done, I was, I was fried, except last week. I've been fried for almost every video that we've ever done. I've been smoking for a minute. I'm not going to say I sit here and smoke like Wiz Khalif. I'm smoking Jay's Terrell. No, I'm a, I'm a chill smoker. I take a hit and do my thing. Take a hit, do my thing. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And I just maintain that level. You know what I'm saying? Real honesty, our shit. Yep. And I watched, I watched it. I used to make excuses about it. You know what I'm saying? It's not necessarily that I would say I was smoking crazy. I'm smoking every minute of the day. But it was something that I maintained. For a long time. Like, I'm always going to be fried. For the people that work with me at uh, Best Buy my last year, uh, I was high every day at work. And people would never know. You know what I'm saying? Nobody would ever think that I was, you know what I'm saying, high when I was. I used to go to my mother's crib high. I used to go. I used to, I've met people, dated people, fell off with people, and was high the whole time. You know? And I think... The main thing that I wanted to talk about was drug abuse. And a lot of people think that drug abuse is doing it in a, with accession, you know what I'm saying? Doing it a whole lot, you know? Mm -hmm. Drug abuse is not always smoking a whole lot. Like I just told you, I'm not, I'm not going through Rellos or, or, or Backwoods, but it was something that I made such a priority in my life that I watched it start taking certain things away from my life. Like I haven't seen my favorite movies my favorite movie is Pulp Fiction. I haven't seen the movie in over three years. It's been three years since I've sat down and watched it because I felt like smoking would take my attention span away. You know, and we've been working so hard and the shit that we're doing, I think I started using it as like a coping mechanism for, for plenty of things. And just recently when I was, I would say about three weeks ago, three Saturdays ago, this is before episode had to be 102. Something like that. 102 or 101. I was cleaning out my, my whip at my parents' house, and it was hot outside. And I had just smoked. Like I was At this point, I'm keeping it in my car. And I had just smoked. And I'm cleaning my car out. I got the boys out. I got, my, uh, the, I got the dogs out. I put them on a tree. I'm like, I'm about to be outside for a minute. I was going to clean my car out on the inside and then spray it off. And I was just vacuuming my car out. I started feeling out of breath. And I just started feeling like... Real hazy, and I never felt like this in my life. I'm like, why do I feel like I'm tired for something like I'm out of breath? I went in the crib, uh, and I just felt like I was about to overheat. I literally felt like I was on overheat. And I had to go in the crib. I had to splash myself with water. I'm putting, like, that's why it was funny when you were saying, black people don't splash themselves with water, but I'm sitting there like, yeah. But if y'all go look how I responded to Terrell on that, I'm like, yeah, every, I think that's like, I tried to, like, curve it. But I had to put water on my head. I poured water down my back. My heart was racing. Because it's just like, I just didn't understand what that was. And I get how, I don't, you know what I'm saying? You get how all the time. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. So I ended up just being completely out of it. Like completely hazed 
like my it just felt like I had some shit right here. And I was just oh, yeah, so yeah. worried. Like I was so worried. I was like, damn, like maybe I just been been doing too much. And I'll tell y'all what it was, what it really is, is I'm going to, I was going to the gym maybe six days a week and my diet yep. started falling off. After that Kendrick Lamar album came out, my diet started falling off because it was it was like I was prioritizing going to the gym, you know what I'm saying, getting something done, but I was not prioritizing eating. But I was going to the gym so much. Like, mm -hmm. I was going so much. And it landed me in the doctor's office. I had to go make a doctor's appointment because I felt that way for two days. Um, it's almost like I couldn't sleep. I didn't want to eat. So when I went to the doctor, the, the doctor was basically letting me know that, like, with so much access working out, and the fact that you smoke often and you're dehydrated, like you're not focusing on your diet, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? When you smoke, it'll, it'll, th it'll smoking already makes your blood move slower. You know what I'm saying? And then with you being dehydrated, you know what I'm saying? That's going to affect your blood even more. Yep. You know, my blood pressure has shot down. I had real low, low pr uh, blood pressure. Um, I just felt so like sick, you know? Yeah. And I felt so embarrassed. I lost 13 pounds. Y'all know I put on weight. I lost 13 pounds and like in like a matter of five days. And I felt embarrassed. I'm not going to lie. I kind of felt embarrassed that something that I was using to like cope with my life ended up landing me here. Because quitting has been something that I wanted to do for, for a minute. But I used to tell myself, oh, it makes me creative. It makes me funny. It makes me a more likable person. You know what I'm saying? And I kind of watched that kind of fail me. So I started feeling like, damn, like this is about to impact who I am. And then I had to remind myself that that's not who I am. You know what I mean? Yeah. And what I mainly wanted to get on here and, and basically tell people is like, you'll think that, oh, well, people will use certain things to cope with the bullshit around you, you know? But you got to use your real, you got to face things on. I, I realize for me, my journey, and this uh -huh. not to tell nobody that's smoking, because I don't talk to a couple people that smoke, and it, it seems like everybody gets defensive. The, one, the main thing that my doctor told me is that no matter what you're smoking, no matter what you're doing to cope, it's not benign. If you take a drink every day, uh, every day you come home from a long day at work, you want to drink, or you want to smoke or do something, you got to make sure that you're keeping up different aspects of your life and keeping up that healthy lifestyle, because that coping mechanism is not benign, meaning it is not, not going to ever do anything to you. Nah, for sure. You know? I watched Absolutely. what I used as a coping me mechanism make me sick. And that threw me into a certain bout of depression. And this is just like two weeks ago. But I think the reason why I stand tall with it now is I'm, I'm kind of like, just to have that clear mind now, it's almost like I had a hat on for two years. You know? Being high is something I would wake up, smoke, eat, gym, smoke. Do whatever I do, come home, smoke, do whatever I do right before bed, smoke, wake up, repeat. I've been high for a long ass time. I took it yeah. real easy. I've been high every day for two years straight. I've been smoking for like six years, but like high every day, two years straight. And I started losing, I felt like who I was. Terrell told you about how I pushed that door off. I, I punched that door when I got upset. I've punched every door in my, in my apartment, you know what I'm saying? Admittedly, out of, not being able to really face my, you know what I'm saying, certain things that happen. Because, you know, your road, the, the road's not always going to be easy. And I don't want to be long-winded on this, even though I have been. But me being sober now allows me to deal with shit for what it really is and me being yeah. who I really am. I used to get irritated and then say, you know what, fuck this. I'm going to smoke later, so I don't even give a fuck. And I realized that's not me dealing with my real problem, you know? Yeah. Or that's not me dealing with it. That's me putting it off and smoking it off, forgetting about it, you know? I yep. think now the withdrawals that I've had from being high every single day after two years, I told Terrell, my biggest withdrawal is nightmares. That's my biggest withdrawal. Uh, other than that, other than, other than not being able to sleep, other than feeling kind of weird when I wake up, mm -hmm. nightmares is my biggest withdrawal. And you know what? I'm going to keep it a hundo. Well, let me ask you this before you get into nightmares. Yeah. How do you think, because, um, you know, there's a bunch of people that smoke every day, all day. Yeah. And that's just their life. 
mm-hmm. you know. How do you think, did it confuse you at one point? Did you feel like, damn, why am I, you know what I'm saying? Did you ever like blame it on something else versus that? I think with, with, the, with knowing that, did it, did it ever like make you feel like, oh, well, it can't be this because. 100%. I used to look at the fact that I'm like, everybody else smoking way more than me. I'm not smoking J's every day. I'm not smoking, you know what I'm saying, L on top of L every day. So I should be straight. You know what I'm saying? But that was one of my biggest takeaways is that your life is different from others' lives. You know? You can't, you might not be able to eat ice cream like that person because you were lactose intolerant. And you can't say, man, fuck it. If she can eat ice cream, let me get that vanilla. You're going to be in the doctor one day. You know what I'm saying? Sick. So... For me, it's not that I will never smoke again. It's just I will never smoke with that mentality again. I will yeah. never use it like I had used it for so long. And I can't say that that didn't have an effect on my decisions that I would make. Sometimes you'd be like, nah, I'm not about to go. Or nah, yeah. I don't want to do this. I think not smoking has made me, over these three weeks, I think I respond better. I think I'm more, more social. You know, you go out and about and you're, not, you're less social, less timid, less on edge. And I started feeling like, damn, this is what I used to be. You know what I'm saying? Damn, yeah. This is the, the person straight, that I used to be. You stray so far from your sober mind that you almost hit like a different person. You like in the, you like, yeah. And I used, to, I used to always say, I'm funnier when I'm hot. But low key, not true. People have been telling me that, yo, you are so funny. And I don't think that I, I still, I'm one of those people that, you know what I'm saying? I never think that I'm funny. But people have told me that since high school. And I was not smoking back then. But nah, that's true. Just to cur- just to end that off, I don't want to take too much time. No, nah, go ahead, because you was gonna say something about dreams, and I want you to forget that. Yeah, nightmares. I'm just something. saying, like drug abuse and drug addiction, two different things. I think Wiz Khalifa is addicted to weed. I think Snoop Dogg is addicted to weed. But the fact that they can live their regular life with it, it's not drug abuse. You know what I mean? Drug abuse is when you allow yourself to prioritize a drug over certain things that. Demand priority. And I started letting that happen. You know what I'm saying? I started not giving a fuck. You don't want to fuck with me? I don't give a fuck. Because I can cope with whatever you say to me this way. And I oh, felt okay, like it started, yeah. it started barking off my true emotions and true feelings. But this is... Nah, that's real. Just to be more lighthearted with it. The nightmares that I have been having are absolutely ridiculous. It is ridiculous because they say when you stop smoking, whether it's cigarettes or weed... When you stop smoking so much of it, your brain has to get used to not having a supply of that. So what will happen is you start having intense, more scarier dreams. And I didn't know this until I had to research it because I said, what the fuck is going on? My dreams are so realistic that I'm unable to be like, this is a dream. Say this is a dream. And I've always been that type of type of person to be like, yo, this is a dream. I'm going to wake up from this bullshit. I'm going to yep. tell you exactly how my dream started. I'm laying in my bed. This is, and I, some of y'all have seen my tweet where I said, I woke up from the scariest dream I ever had. And it was not about a monster or anything like that. It was, I woke up, I woke up in my bed like it was my regular bed. So I thought that I'm good, you know? I got up, I came out and seen Mimi, like I always do. I was walking around my apartment, and then when I walked into my mirror, this is going to sound weird as fuck, I was a brown-skinned girl. When I looked in the mirror, I saw a brown-skinned girl with braids, and she was fine. So you was fine in your dream? I was a fine-ass brown-skinned girl. (laughs) Damn. And I looked into my mirror, and I'm like, think about if you were to walk into your bathroom right now and see a girl in the bathroom. I said, okay, hold up. Maybe I'm dreaming. Right? Terrell was there. This girl that I fucked with was there. Candace, mom and dad ended up being here. And I said, I'm dreaming. Like, I know that I'm dreaming. And I had my whole family like, nah, you're not dreaming. You're not dreaming. Like, you're, you're tripping. So when y'all started doing that, I started feeling like, I'm not dreaming. Nigga, you just woke up out of your bed, you know? Like, you already got up out of your bed and did your oh, thing. Oh, shit, yeah. So you're not dreaming. Because you, I saw you wake up. This is me in my dream. So then, you know, we got this dog named Bentley. Bentley was here, but Bentley looked weird as shit. And I kept saying, damn, he looked like he's sick or some shit. And this wasn't like a dream where he looked crazy different. 
I said, this motherfucker looks sick. I kept saying, he looked like something wrong with him. And look, mom was looking at me like this. And she started panicking like shit. Like, I don't know if y'all remember in Inception, once you start understanding that it's a dream, the things in your dream start yeah. noticing that you notice. Oh, yeah. If y'all go look at Inception. Your conscious mind is, your, is literally telling, is trying, trying to tell, to tell me. Yeah. But I don't believe it. And my mother starts saying, my father's name Kenny. My mother called my father Kenny. Kenny, is something wrong with him. Kenny, is something wrong with him. And I'm like, it is something wrong with him. <laughs> <laughs> because I felt like I was dreaming. And my mother was like, you're not dreaming. Why does he keep saying that? And then it turned you at me. It turned Candace at me. And the only thing that would make me think that I wasn't dreaming is Bentley still looked fucked up. Right? So I said, I'm, I'm awake. Like, this is how short the dream was. The dream was so short, I knew that I was awake. I said, nah, I'm dreaming. So I said, I will prove to y'all that I'm dreaming. I said, in your dream, I, in my dream. I was telling y'all that I was dreaming in my dream. I said, I just have to find a knife and like slit my throat. So I'm literally looking for, there's no knives over here. We got a big damn knives right here. I'm looking for the knives, there's no knives. I was like looking for a gun or some shit to try to off my shit. I was trying to jump off the balcony and dad pulled me away from the balcony. Like, I said, if y'all let, I will wake up. And I feel this real big pain in my side. And I thought I was like having like a, like a heart attack because I was like having this attack. And then I laid down on the floor. And then guess what? I wake up from my dream. And I'm laying right in my bed. Mind you, this is just like I just woke up in the dream. I was terrified to go look in the mirror and see a brown-skinned girl. I was terrified to look at myself. I looked at my hands. I started feeling my hair. This is an alive, awakened me. I'm feeling my arms. I'm looking around, and I'm like, I did this before, and I, let, I went and saw a brown-skinned girl. <laughs> so I put on I put on Wolf of Wall Street. I watched the whole fucking thing. It was 6 a.m. I got on my phone. If y'all see when I tweeted and I said, I've had nightmares before. I tweeted that at like 6 a.m. I said, I've had nightmares before, but that one just was like life changing. I posted on my Instagram, I posted on Twitter. And y'all don't realize that y'all responses, I was looking for like somebody say something so I know that I'm like not tripping. Because normally if I tweet, somebody will say some shit, you yeah. know? So then I eventually got up, looked in the mirror, and it was me. I tell you, I've never had a dream like that before. I was on 10. I said, we going to the gym. I'm about to bust it out. I'm about to make sure I eat good today because <laughs> what the fuck? Nah, what was that? So did you ever have, did you feel, was it something that was causing you pain in your side? When I woke up, I thought my, 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 I had pain in my side. But you know how you just sleep weird? Yeah. And you're like, you needed to get up anyway? I was looking for that pain in my side the whole time. But that pain in my side was what woke me up. And like, this is no lie, no cap, none of that. It was a crazy experience, and the main reason why it was crazy is because I had no idea that I was actually asleep. I've never went to sleep, had a dream, and woke up in my bed. I was, it was even a part of my dream where I was laying in my bed for a minute before I got up. Like, it, was, it just seemed so normal. That's crazy. It was crazy as fuck. And it made me look into why I was having that, you know what I mean? Like, and even to this even to this day, my dreams are way more vivid. The other one I had the other night was lit. You know what I'm saying? I need to have more of those dreams. But <laughs> I told her just last night, I looked on uh, Shade Room and seen that the, uh, they said that they were offering people two thousand dollars to let a th to let a hundred cockroaches go in your crib. I looked at that last night to see what they're gonna do. To yeah. see because they're gonna try to do a study to see if they you know something about extermination or something like Where's that. It? Two thousand dollars is not enough, but wait, it's definitely not enough. But I told Terrell last, I had a dream last night. Me and Terrell was in this random ass motel. It was cockroaches everywhere. And look, I had, we, had, we both had fly swatters, right? But when you hit the motherfucker, it would splat and then just keep going. So we was, we was oh, hitting them God. once. And then you know how in a dream, it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm going slow as fuck. Like, and then I woke up and I'm getting more used to, and I think they're starting to go away. But, I'm, but this is me basically letting y'all know that long term habits, can have a long-term effect, you know? No, nah, that's true. And you don't want to put yourself in a position where you've become jaw-like dependent on some shit, and when it's time for you to let go, now you kind of 
in a rut because mm -hmm. I'm blessed to not have to wake up at 6 a.m. for a certain job. But if I did, my sleep schedule is now impacted. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The, what I've used to make it through this job because it put me in the fucking hospital. Now I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not making that choice. My body's telling me I can't do it. Yeah. So now that could impact everything. So you just got to be careful of the things that you might be dependent on. It might be somebody listening to this that it ain't just you just smoking for fun. It ain't just you doing this because you want to do it. It might have started that way, but now it's become a part of your lifestyle. And never yeah. think that that shit is, be, is benign. That shit can harm you as soon as you let one little thing slip. Drinking every day, cool, but guess what? Your job requires y'all to be outside now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And now, you know what I'm saying? Your body don't know how to deal with what mm -hmm. you've been doing. My doctor said at a certain point in time, your body will say, okay, now nah, I'm not trying to do this no yes. more. Yes. That's a fact. And, you know, I was just telling my girl the same thing literally yesterday. You, the, the effects of some shit, it don't happen gradually. It's not like a tooth. Not everything is like a toothache. Right. You know what I'm saying? People be thinking, I got a little, oh, like I got a small headache. It goes away. Now it's a worse headache and now it's getting worse. Shit don't be happening like that. One day you can just pass out. And now your life is changed from September the 13th. This happened to me, and now my life has completely changed from that one thing. It's not always going to be something that you can say, this is getting worse, getting worse, getting worse, boom. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Every podcast. But, um, <laughs> Terrence, that's ridiculous. They said Terrence has a, <laughs> this nigga Terrence has an alarm like he's taking birth control. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what's crazy, bro? Watching the, it's crazy to hear you tell that story while I'm watching, like, Stranger Things. Yeah. Like, and dealing with the upside down and how it's like, this is reality, but it's really not. It's not. It looks just like it. It's just different layers. And now that he, my man, young boy, is on the other side of it, he's like going, having those effects of he's like going through it. Yeah. And I feel like the human people don't understand like the human body is one of the most incredible, if not the most incredible creations, bro. It is. Even the, the, the fact that you lay down to go to sleep and can be, like, we've talked about this a thousand times, so there's no point in us getting in our deep dream bag. But the fact that you could go to a different dimension or different reality. Last night, I was at this girl's house. I will never forget. I was at a girl that I was trying to get's house. I'm single again in my dream. I'm trying to get this girl, but I'm with her mom, but it's my mom. I was like, I got to go to this girl house because we setting up for a birthday party. I get there. It's my, but it's her mom. She says, hey, nice to meet you type shit. Weird as fuck. My mom. Yeah. And I'm helping set up for the, this chick's birthday party. She came home and didn't fuck with it. I woke up like, <laughs> what, what the, the fuck? fuck? Fuck that bitch in the dream. Uh, <laughs> right. But it's crazy how you could do all of that, bro. And the fact that you had your subconscious mind got used to you being a certain way. Yeah. It got used to you operating at a certain frequency so that when you're not there, your, your conscious mind is always working against your subconscious. Yeah. Because there's some shit that you're not thinking about right here that your brain is purposely putting here because there's other shit you got to focus on. Yeah. AKA, I need to make sure we can feel. I need to make sure you don't step on some sharp shit, and if you do, you lift that motherfucking foot up. Put your hand over a flame right now. It's amazing how fast your brain will be like, motherfucker, that's hot. Right. Whoa, you ever touched the iron on accident? Yeah. Think about that reflex and how fast your brain has to send signal from here all the way. So the okay. fact that you, you went from operating at a certain frequency and now you are dealing with that, it's honestly kind of like crazy. Yeah. But I think that's dope, and I think that's dope advice to give people because a lot of people might be in their own version of something like that where they might be using something to cope and not realize it and they could before they may not before it's too late. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and they have real, real serious effects. And I was just saying, I love I love the people that listen to this podcast and the people that support us. Um, and I felt like my story is something that I feel like somebody could use it as, a, as an example. I'm not afraid to say what's real because I'm really living it. I don't I'm not afraid for somebody to throw it in my face. Oh you was oh you couldn't handle the weed or or some I was I'm I'm prepared for somebody to talk shit to me like that because this is my life. You know what I'm saying? And we ran up racks. Yeah. 
So I went and racks on it. You know what I'm saying? So like uh -huh. it never really. I wouldn't necessarily call it a addiction, more to, more so than I just thought this was something that I can enjoy at this level, and now you'll realize like, damn, you've been abusing it, kind of like you now it's kind of like all right now you kind of gotta you have to step off now. And when, you know what, Terrence? It's not just drugs that you can abuse. It's anything that you use. That's to why cook. I said it could be drinking. It could be the fact that you like to eat. I like to wake up in the morning and eat a pack of roll of donuts every morning. That could what? harm your whole day. Hell yeah. The video if you just if you use video games or you know certain shit like that to cope, some people coping through their social media don't even know it. That's a fact. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? That and shit what, is and what happens when Instagram go down or your game break? Now you a fucking irritated ass motherfucker. Yep. You rude as fuck to people. That's a fact, bro. Don't lose who you are behind that shit that you're using to cope. Yep. But I appreciate, you know what I'm saying, anybody who would listen to this and even just give it a ear, if, if, if anything, you know, because it was real personal for me. I started to not get on here and say nothing. You know, I was last week on the podcast, people was like, even on the TL, people are like, you irritated, you mad. And I'm like, okay, so this is what I'm dealing with, kind of start, y'all kind of starting to see it. But it's good because my, I can see it too, you know? Okay, yeah. I'm not going to make no excuses neither. I'm just going to deal with it and rock. I told him, y'all, look, I had to deal with it in the worst way. We didn't have Wi-Fi for three days. Oh, yeah. I couldn't go to the gym. I literally had to sit, jaw like, and mm -hmm. just deal with it. So, yeah, sometimes that mirror the toughest thing for niggas to look at. 100. 100. Fact. Candace um, said the truest shit. No, no, no. I'm going to say that later. Because Candace did say some true shit. I was, she was like, y'all can use that as a quote for y'all podcast. <laughs> she said it. She said, <laughs> she said some true shit, but it don't have nothing to do with this. And one of the realest quotes somebody told me the other day was, you got to take every speed bump two wheels at a time. And I said, Man. that shit is fire. That shit is fire. You Candace gotta, is a little bit better now. All right, give me hers. Candace. Hold on, let me tell you what that what the dude meant. Okay, yeah. He said, motherfuckers will fly through a problem yeah. and think, and he was talking about relationships. And he was like, people will fly through a problem. And the fact that they went into it with so much aggression and rage and not thinking clear, now your whole front alignment to your relationship is fucked. And now you doing, you got to, even though y'all got past the problem, it caused a tailspin of all this bullshit that you're dealing with. Yeah. So he said, y'all together got to take every speed bump two wheels at a time. The same way you do in a car. He was like, y'all in the car together. Damn, yeah. That's he said, real. Look, you know what he said? He said, you can't take. He said, y'all got to move together because if you do your one wheel over, he said, what happens when you go one wheel at a time? That whole motherfucking car <laughs> gets it shaking. Motherfucking. You know what? And that's what I wanted to say. Some of these Instagram clips be fire. You niggas that's in the gym doing your chest and try day and want to put the hard work dedication quote, you're doing that shit for yourself. Am I really in? Because that's what you got to think about. Am I really inspired by looking at this or am I looking at you work out and, oh, he used this audio? Because that's what it's turning into. But it's real shit you can find out. There. 100. But what it, uh Candace said the grass is only greener where you water it. Ooh. <laughs> I said, Candace, that's it. I don't know where she got that, but like, that's true. The grass is only greener where you water it. The grass is only greener where you water it. You think the grass is greener on the other side, but that's you watering that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's a fact. You think the grass greener here, or the grass green was greener here. Nah, the grass low-key greener where you water it. And, like, of course the grass isn't gre always green on the other side. It's still a valid quote, but, like, That's a real, I like real good that one. one. Yeah. Because you would know, you'll start to notice, like, yeah, the grass is greener here because I'm watering, because I'm, de I'm, I'm, I'm paying attention to this. I'm giving my all to this. At a certain point, you was the man at your job because uh -huh. you was watering that. And then this didn't look like green grass. It did. You know what I'm saying? Once you started watering this more, the grass mm -hmm. got greener. So, man. I'm not trying to stay on some deep shit. You know, I'll be trying to Let's be on Let's talk about how we feel about <laughs> life. All right. Like. <laughs> All right, look. Squid Game Season 2 just got announced. Bet. Right? Squid Game Season 2, and I'm not going to lie. I saw that and was like, okay, but what the fuck y'all going to do? This is what I want. I don't want the redhead four, five, six who got out, shaved this whole shit. Now he got a redhead going back to try and save everybody. I don't want a continuation of that. 
I would much rather have a brand new batch of motherfuckers and new games. New squid games. New mm. shit. And then y'all can incorporate it some other way. I don't want to see him running back with that red hair, which was the stupidest decision that they made in that show. I don't want to see him going back. He's ditching his son, yeah. that he been, I mean his daughter, that he's been trying to get back to. This motherfucker in the airport to see her, went through this whole shit to get back to her. And said, you know what, fuck this, I'm going back. Nobody talks about how that was low-key. A lot of people didn't like that. Why the fuck did they do that? But if, it, if I had it my way for Squid Games 2, do it like Saw 2. Incorporate the motherfucker, but it's some brand new shit. I was just about to say, I think Squid Game Season 2 has the opportunity to do exactly what you did with their Season 2. You know what I'm saying? Okay, yeah. And that's just be just just give people something new to get invested in. I think if you do have a whole new batch of people going through all new games, but you do incorporate him coming back and saving these people, you will have a successful season two. Because I do think there's no way they can do season two without him. Yeah. But I think they should incorporate, like you said, let us fall in love with a whole new batch of people. Don't try to bring the p- other people back, even though every look everybody died. So you yeah. kind of have to have new people, which is dope. The world can fall in love with more people. The Squid Game director just came out and said that, you know what I'm saying, them getting renewed for a season two shows that the world is kind of interested in, a, in more global content. And that's true. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Michelle Yeo mm-hmm. leading that charge. Not a lot of people know who she is. So people are infatuated with, I think, People are infatuated with characters and good shows. The best thing about Squid Game is the many different characters that we got to, you could see. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You could play, you, if Squid Game was a video game, you could click through the different characters and say, oh, I remember her. She was this way. Or I remember him. He was this way. You know? This dude was smart. This dude was scared. This dude was dumb. This dude was naive. Yeah. So... When you have characters like that, like I've been watching, I've been on a, a Martin Scorsese kick. I've watched Wolf of Wall Street. I've watched Goodfellas. One of the biggest assets of Martin Scorsese's films is always the characters. It's always characters. Yeah. It's never story. Yeah. One of the best it's things. It's never story. Never story. And Martin Scorsese would just shut the movie off at the end. And he gives a specific humanity to these characters where they're not perfect, where they're good. This, the good guy fucks up the same way the bad guy can fuck up. Mm-hmm. And I think Squid Game kind of like took that same, you know what I'm saying, embodiment. And I think with season two, they have a big opportunity to do something real nice. However, they also could fuck this up. They could fuck it up. If they do bring that dude back, 456, and have him go through the whole game again, and we got to follow him through the whole game again, Yeah, that's risky. But low key, we fuck with the fact that these people about to die. Somebody about to die because of this game. The fact that you could take a childhood game and make adults play it, and we all know that these adults that are playing it aren't perfect. They've made mistakes in their life. They owe money or whatever. It's not just mm-hmm. killing random innocent people. People can get it. We can watch that. I mean, it's a show. We wouldn't want to be in it, but you can no, watch that sure. and fuck with it. And I just hope that they get to retain creative control, the original writers, and they don't Netflix it up. You know what I'm saying? Nah, yeah. I feel that. Netflix picked it up, cool, whatever, but I just don't want them to put, put the Netflix claws in it. And yeah. now it's bullshit in it. Now there's agendas everywhere in it. You know what I'm oh, saying? Okay, yeah. Let it be true to what it is. Because who did we watch them do that with? You season you, four. You season four. Mm-hmm. Um, bunch of shit. But they were talking about the fucking, oh my God, that was terrible. They, they had, had the anti-vaxxer versus you the- You didn't want to get the vaccine and then you got my, my so-and-so sick. And, oh, oh yeah. my God. And they killed the anti-vaxxer. That was crazy. <laughs> I didn't fuck with that. I feel like that's where, we, that's where art, art imitate life. But when you put me in a different world, I expect to be in a different world. If that world has the same shit going on here, that's fine. But when, when I can feel you trying to make a statement to the real world, I don't like it. Yeah. I don't like that. Um, but you had a... Um, I got a couple things on here. I wanted to talk about um, uh, going into a store when they're closing, you know? Okay. We got a lot of people who be out here doing, doing their thing. If, if, if there was a video that was going viral last week about the Cold Stone. Yeah. And they went into that Cold Stone at like 829 and the Cold Stone closed at 830. Yeah. And 
it's more like I've never been that person, but I know people who say, "Oh, they close in ten minutes. I'm about to run up in there." If if I know y'all close in ten minutes, I'm not. I might not even go if it's if it's eight and y'all and y'all close at eight thirty, and I know I'm gonna get there around eight oh nine. Even then, I'm like, my bad, y'all. I know y'all yeah. about to close. Oh, were you in the mall? They got the one door closed and the they other got the one gate open. Halfway yeah. down, some of y'all will go right under that yeah. gate. <laughs> Fuck that. But uh, Terrell added a real good. Terrell added good insight on how the business should look at it. So I was just going to see if you wanted to give that on the podcast because oh, as yeah, a because customer going in before business closed, you're not necessarily wrong, you're but not. How, should as, how should the business handle that, you know? I think as a customer, if they close at 9 and you walk in at 859, you are well within your right to go in and shop. Mm-hmm. There is a reason because, like, if you think about it, there was a video online last week. If you didn't see it, Dude and his wife came in for Cold Stone 829. The employees are saying, our clock says 830. Our clock says 830. They're saying, oh, no, but ours said 829. And people were trying to clown him on Twitter saying, these niggas thought they was recording like we was going to agree with them. But nah, customers was 100% right. Number one, if I can get in the door, you're open. That's just a fact. When we used to shut gates, if a motherfucker's walking up to the door, Mm -hmm. some people will keep closing the gate and say, yeah, we already hit nine. Oh, okay, cool. If a customer walks into the store and you haven't shut down yet, that motherfucker can shop. Mm-hmm. First of all, nobody's schedule says they, okay, cool, so y'all close at 8.30. All y'all schedule say y'all get off at 8.30? Y'all got closing duties, right? Part of that closing duty, I can literally give me y'all SOP. I bet it says take care of any last customers. Right. At the end of the store, you got to do a perimeter walk to make sure that nobody's in the store, period. Right. That's every, that's, that's. That's, that's commonplace in every business, a perimeter walk to secure all perimeters, make sure nobody else is in there. Mm-hmm. So it ain't like it's the end of the fucking world. Number two, if I'm their manager, I'm not saying that they get fired because the dude was like, would you fire them? And I'm like, hell no. But y'all would all be held accountable because number one, now look at what we're dealing with. As opposed to you making a quick birthday surprise or a birthday supreme or birthday cake, birthday cake remix... Because you know what the dude said. Terrell fucking, fucking loves birthday cake <laughs> remix. <laughs> when he go to Cold Stone, let me get the birthday cake remix. <laughs> <laughs> that drain fire. Yeah. But look, the dude, you know what the dude and his wife said. I just got my daughter up here from Kentucky, and we just wanted to come up here and get her some, some ice cream. And y'all doing this? You're going to lose. Better yeah. Business Bureau, you're going to lose. Because the Better Business Bureau going to be like, when did they walk in? They walked in at 829. We'll pull cameras. They said they walked in at 829, 830. The door was unlocked. They came in. Y'all was clearly there. It, it could have taken you five minutes to put together a birthday cake remix and get them on their way. Lock the door. Right. Or if you were supposed to be closed at 830, why was my door not locked from the outside so nobody could pull in and come in? Right. These are the questions. When you're in leadership and you start thinking about business integrity, Business, yeah, when you start thinking about it that way, because people be thinking, shit, I get off, I don't give a fuck. Right. But that's why you're not in charge. Right. That's why you're not a manager or you're not going to be in leadership. Right. And it's a lot of people that's not ready for the weight of leadership mm-hmm. because it comes with satisfying your employees, but it also comes with making sure they do the right shit. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, I give a fuck about you as my employee. This motherfucker in here that want the last minute birthday cake remix, do I agree that he's an asshole for coming in at 829 asking for a whole shit? Yeah, but you got to protect yourself as an employee. Mm -hmm. You got yourself out here looking wild. I used to tell my employees, if a nigga's stealing, let that motherfucker run out the store. Right. You tackle this man, he stabbed you. Guess what? You just got stabbed over a motherfucking some shit. You don't even own it. These motherfuckers got insurance. They can replace it. Right. Or you go off on the customer. He going off. Now you don't have a job. That motherfucker can keep shopping. He going to come right back in. People just not. That's when you know you. when When I first started getting into the shit. Yeah. That's where I was like, all right, bet. My, my mindset started changing. I stopped thinking about what I could do for these people, and I started thinking, how can I help these motherfuckers make more money? Damn Shout out yeah. my boy, Amonique. Amonique was making $14, $15 when he met me. $25 up now. Yeah. Because your, your mindset got to change. Put a market, because you don't want to put that man money out there. Not about, I mean, he make more than that now. Damn, see? Ball. But it's just a, it's just yeah. a reminder that, and you know what? Shout out to my boy Huncho J01 because he asked us. He was like, how do you feel about him and his friends was like, how do you feel about other people judging you for moving up? And how do you stay cool with people while you want to move up and not look like the person that became? And there's no way you can do that. Understand that when you try to move up in a business, 
Motherfuckers is going to start looking at you like, oh, this motherfucker, he a kiss ass, goody two shoes, whatever. Yeah. You just got to remember why you're doing it for. When I did it, they said the same thing about me, my boy Don Cell. Shout out to him, Generation Typo. When he started moving up when nobody else was, they was talking shit about him, saying, oh, he a goody two shoes, whatever. But we, we try to get more money. So you just got to realize that, remember what I said about Sim and the hyenas? That's it. And I was going to say, it's a certain point where you'll graduate from trying to just get your check to trying to make the business look a certain way. I want us to. Ha- I, I used to have to. I used to want our reputation to be a certain way as a business, and that's when you uh-huh. know you're starting to graduate into like leadership. When you start understanding and wanting the business, it don't matter what business you're working for, mm-hmm. but you want that rep- represent. You know, you, you want your reputation to be good within the community. You don't want people to start spreading bad shit about your business. I want y'all to think about if it was your store. Imagine whole nine fact. store gets a storefront. What do I look like slamming the door on a nigga face that wants to support my business? Mm-hmm. Oh, but we closed at 830, so you're going to have to come back tomorrow. Right. So you know you're saying? not going, even though your employees don't give a fuck as much as you, you're going to be the one to be like, and that's why they were, and that's why you look to hire people who say, yo, we about getting that money. You know, we, sure. about getting, we about getting this business to the next level. Right. And you got to think about it. Everybody is working for money. There's no, I would have never taken any job in my life if it wasn't for money. I mean, yeah. So it's not like I was just in love with the company or whatever, but you just got to realize that the next level of money requires the next level of responsibility that you got to take. Yeah. And then when you're responsible for those motherfuckers, it's an even higher level. Yeah. Because now if a motherfucker fall off the ladder in your store, you was off, guess who fault it is? It's your fault because it's your fucking name on the store. Right. So I knew Sorrell was going to get in his bag with that one, y'all. And I think he has good, like, good insight on that. Yeah, for sure. What'd you have next? Um, I had some sports shit, but I know you had those, uh, what's the names you wanted to go through first? This I was going to try to do last, but you want to run through sports? What do we really have for sports? Two things. Two things for sports. Nah, let's do sports last. All right, bet. We always do sports last. I, what I have right here are what's called unanswerable questions. We're going to run through these. These questions literally are going to be hard as fuck to answer, but I think these are, uh, questions that I definitely make people think. I'm just going to run through it. All right. Uh... And maybe this is going to be whack. <laughs> <laughs> it says, do dentists go to other dentists or do they treat their own dental problems? They go to other dentists. A dentist goes to another dentist? Mm-hmm. They, they just got- know what the fuck, they, they know what the fuck is going on. That's the E13. Betty not sh- that one. Betty, set a direct ma- ray machine for uh-huh. me. Put it like this. Why is the color vanilla, why is vanilla ice cream the color white and vanilla itself is the color brown? Damn. It's like, what? Feel me? That's true, though. Where do they put the Bible in, li- in libraries? In fiction or nonfiction? Woo! Now, that question. Y'all want to <laughs> Y'all want to have that question. Look. Nonfiction. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck with it? <laughs> That's an easy answer. <laughs> That's if, a tricky one. If God created Adam and Eve, did they have belly buttons? Yeah, they did. Because don't you get your belly button from when they cut the umbilical cord? God cut it. Now watch your fucking mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and put the Bible in fucking yeah. nonfiction. This is easy. <laughs> Why do people say they slept like a baby if they slept through the night when babies are known for waking up and not sleeping through the night? I slept like a baby last night, but babies don't necessarily But they through never the sleep through the night. I guess they're talking about the calmness of a baby sleeping, you know? Look, when you get to heaven, do you look, the sa- do you look as you do at the age when you die? That's the one that is like your soul goes to heaven. So really, this is just the, the you know, the body, the temple doesn't, you don't, you, you rent your body. That was an easy one. Okay. All right. All right. I'm with you. Look, if the number two pencil is the most popular, why is it number two? Woo! I don't know. We gonna, I'm not going to ask no more questions, bro. I'm not going to ask no more. That's just the only ones that I had that I was going to answer. Because look, it's other ones, it's other ones, but I got one. What color is a mirror? That's bullshit. What color is a it? A mirror is a reflection. So what color is it? Whatever colors are, it reflects. You know what they said? Well, never mind. Go ahead. If you enjoy wasting time, is that really time <laughs> wasted? That's what they said. They said if you, if you intend to fail a test. Did you really <laughs> fail? And, and you pass. <laughs> did you fail or succeed? <laughs> if anything is possible, is it possible for anything to be impossible? Weird questions, bro. 
It's funny. I was looking at a gang in them questions last night. Trey them pulled up, son. That's what it said. Look, you see that? If you attend to fail. Nah, I used to have a bunch of these. Why is it that rain drops but snow falls? Why is it that when your temperature goes up, they say you have a cold? Terrence, they say you got a fever. Dumbass. Look. You know dumbass. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking dumbass podcast. Oh. Yeah. So, big shout out to the Warriors for uh, taking a 3-2 lead. If you listen to this podcast on Friday, game six is tonight. So, I have one question for you. Hold on, game six is actually Thursday. Tomorrow night. So, they're actually going to know. Oh, the Warriors shit. may have already won the finals. Okay, yeah. So, that's what I was going to ask you. Yeah. At this point, we either already, y'all already know, but last minute prediction for you. I don't give a damn, but do you think that the Warriors close out at TD and take the finals, or do you think the Celtics take it to game seven? Terrence, the basketball take that nobody wants. All right. Honestly, I think the Warriors going to go and take this from them boys. I yeah. think they're going to take it in Boston. You think game six Clay going to show up? I just, th I mean, look at all of that. You got so much going on. And then, look, Steph was not even on this last game. If Wiggins can keep that shit going and that whole team come to play, Tatum going to have to get it together, man. Yeah. Tatum going to have to have them games that he needs to have. Otherwise, I would love to see game seven for the finals. I would love that. Yeah. But and they said, the, they said that the uh, Celtics have not lost two straight ever in this finals. So... A lot of people think they're gonna take it to seven. Look, I'm, they already uh, we already got Warriors champions. Right. Shit everywhere. I don't know. Right, we don't really know. But the other thing I did want to say is the NFL has uh, moved on from Pizza Hut and will officially partner with Little Caesars Pizza um, oh, to be no. the official pizza partner of the NFL. The the partnership includes social media games, new products, new packaging. And unique promotion. It's a multi-year deal for Little Caesars. They need to say new pizzas, new recipes. <laughs> <laughs> See, but it's the thing. They said the success of this multi-year deal could land Little Caesars as the number one pizza chain in the world. Right now, they're number three. Number two, number four is Papa John's, who was the NFL partner, no mm -hmm. longer. But they, number three is, is uh, Little Caesars. Number two is Pizza Hut. Did you, did you see the piece that was going around that said nobody out pizzas the hut, but Little Caesars? Anyway, number one is Domino's. And Domino's I, is the best pizza. They number one. The best, like, quick pizza. That, look, that garlic crust. Garlic. Ain't nothing like Domino's pizza. That shit was fine. I don't remember who I used to know that they used to, like, fuck with Domino's pizza heavy. Mm -hmm. But for real, for real. I, oh, I'm sorry. They didn't fuck with Domino's pizza, but I love Domino's pizza. I grew up on it. Do you Coming remember you Marco's more? Pizza in Florida? Yes. Do you know oh, that? Oh, wow. Yes. They the number six pizza chain in the world now. Damn, for real. Yeah. That pizza was fire. And remember, like, we grew up, we, we grew up on Pizza Hut, Domino's, sometimes Pizza Bowley, if pizza you got Bowley. lucky. Uh, and then Papa John, I guess. Papa John's, Pizza Bowley. But Little Caesars was always the company that was smaller that we didn't really fuck with, but they had the little $5 pizza you could get. Right. Number three now, just part of the NFL about to run up. They about to run the bag up for real. And look, Vocelli's, that's a, that might Vocelli be is a, Vocelli is, is, might is be fire. local, but fire, because they have the other Eat. shit. Three Brothers. Three Brothers Pizza, Sabero in the mall. Sabero's the number, the number seven chain. This nigga. I looked at all of that when shit. When did you turn into Sal's Pizzeria? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you dress like him right now, boy. Yeah, all right. Somebody was in there. We need some brothers on the wall. <laughs> But that, look, that's all I had for sport. Yeah, I don't really got too much for sports either. I mean, we still trying to pay Terry, my Washington Commanders. What the fuck? Oh, and let me tell y'all. Have y'all seen my Mystics? Huh? Terrence, people bet. Are y'all seeing my Mystics? My Mystics are actually some ballers this year, and this reminded me of that 2019 season. I think we about to take it all. Hey, hey Phoenix Mercury bust that ass last night, and Skylar Diggins was playing. I know that they don't have, you know what I'm saying, everybody. <laughs> Free Brittany Griner. Free Brittany Griner. Free Britney Griner, free Britney Griner. Facts. Unfortunately, they just it's they ridiculous. just extended her what's the name like eighteen more days. We're trying to get her back home. It's but crazy. I'm becoming even more of an advocate for the WNBA, y'all. Like I, Terrell will tell you, I watch the highlights. I'm watching the games. I'm tuning in. Yeah. And this isn't me trying to be. You know how people try to get with stuff just so they can say they with something that people aren't. Yeah. 
my mentor from the grave, Kobe Bryant, is one of the re biggest reasons why I got into it. Sabrina Ionesco, uh, that her wave of entering the league and Kobe being really infatuated with her and watching her play in college, I felt like it's what kind of thrusted me back into, you know what I'm saying, uh, interest. At first I had interest because we won in 2019. Yeah. Just like my Washington Nationals. Some of y'all teams can't relate. Can't win us. <laughs> anyway, I'm back. And I told her I'm going to a game. I don't give a fuck who goes with me. I'll go with you. Get the I'm tickets. I'm about to get that Natasha Cloud jersey. She on Cloud 9. You know we repping a 9. So oh, okay, I'm okay, fucking okay, with it. Okay. I'm really into the WNBA now. I'm, I'm, I'm excited because I feel like sometime in the in the near future, it's going to be a lot bigger. We had Bradley Beal and his wife at the game with, with the boys there. It's a good thing to see. Yeah. It's a good thing to see. So turn you, up WNBA. For sure. You got a uh, any movie rec recommendation? I do have a movie suggestion of the week. It's a movie that I just rewatched a couple times when I didn't have cable. The Wolf of Wall Street. Man. I don't know if y'all have watched that movie. It was essentially, it used to have the most profanity. I think the most swearing in a movie was that movie before this other movie kind of like took it off. But if you are, I don't know if y'all remember episode 99 where he said, are you behind on your credit card bills? Good. Pick up the phone and start dialing. That is the movie that I'm talking about. Wolf of Wall Street. I just rewatched it for the first time in years. And it is just a brilliant watch. Leonardo DiCaprio. Brilliant. You got Jonah Hill. It's a Martin Scorsese film. And look, I got two movie suggestions for the week. If you don't want to watch that one, good fellas. R.I.P. Ray Liotta. I just rewatched that one. I watched The Making. And y'all know when I watch a movie, I watch all of the shit behind. I watch The Making. I watch the uh, behind the scenes commentary. Um, I'm getting ready to watch Goodfellas with the director's commentary and the actor's commentary on it just so you can get a feel for like what they were doing. It's even made me start rereading the Wolf of Wall Street book and I want to get the 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 book that inspired Goodfellas by that dude. But um so, I'm on a real Martin Scorsese kick. So those would be my two movie suggestions for that. I'm a, I I am gonna I don't know I don't normally do this but I would Wolf of Wall Street is so fucking good. That's my second favorite movie of all time. Number one, you know Leo is my favorite actor. I battled it for a long time. Leo is my guy. Leo's my guy too. My first favorite film of all time, Inception. Um, just incredible. That film you could reference, like we reference it a little bit today. Yeah. Um, Inception. Inception, and then Wolf of Wall Street. And so let me throw, let me throw out a different movie. I would say. I thought you just had one on your board. I was going to do one, but I didn't want to do that one. And now he's trying to think hard. He's got Brokeback Mountain on his board. If you want to see a real love story, <laughs> and put everything aside. <laughs> nah, you know what? I don't have one. All right, but I gave him two. You gave him two. That's good. I'm watching Stranger Things right now. <laughs> <laughs> this man been talking about Stranger Things this whole podcast. That's funny. Because I I know, right? Look, I'm referencing the Upside Down. Yeah, <laughs> but that was a good, that was real good. A, a real good tie-in. Yeah, hell yeah. Hey, look, sense. and then the, the joint we started with, Fences. I mean, Fences. Oh hell of God, a fucking yes. movie. And that's on Netflix, Fences. If you're looking for, if you're a writer, for anybody that's for, the, for that niche group that might listen to us that's, that's into writing, Fences is a film where if you want to see execution of dialogue, oh, yeah, that's the one. It's talky, though. You got to be a fan to watch. So, yeah, that one is definitely a, a chatty one. How do you watch Wolf of Wall Street online? It is Amazon Prime. If you got the Stars app. And I was getting ready to say it's on Stars, it's on Amazon, it's on Paramount Plus if you got that, and it's um, yeah, it's on Amazon for free, and it looks like it's getting ready to come back to Netflix soon. We got the Steel Book, don't we? I watched the 4K Steel Book, yeah, and Goodfellas is on. Goodfellas is 100% on what's the name? Uh, Netflix. I want to say, no, it ain't. It should be. It's not. I would have watched it on Netflix. Goodfellas is on Amazon Prime Amazon Video. Amazon Prime Video. Yes, so, sir. oh, look, one, two, three movies. Get it done. <laughs> <laughs> and I just got that Everything Everywhere All at Once. Yes, sir. I got that digital copy, dog. We about to watch number, watch number two. Finally. <laughs> Finally. I'm about to be watching that joint on the second time. So, Yes, sir. Big shout out to all the fathers out there, man. Happy Father's Day. 
Happy Juneteenth. It's up. Yes, sir. Till next time. Yes, sir. Now, where that weed at? <laughs> <laughs>